This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this session is titled, Living Below Par. I confidently assert that each of us is living below what God has for us. I don't say that to slight people, since I include myself in that statement. I am confident that what God has for each of us is wonderfully more than we would ever imagine. Let me share some Bible verses that support that truth. We are told that God is able to do far more than we would expect. In Ephesians 3.20 it says, Now to him who is able to do abundantly more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. God is able to do more in us than we ever pray for or that we can even imagine. So certainly we could pray for more and press in for more than we have experienced so far. Consider this verse, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Are you currently abounding in every good work? Are you currently finding grace abounding in your situations, including all things at all times, having everything you need? Apostle Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus that they would get a revelation of the amazing power God has for all believers. In Ephesians 1, 18-20 it says, I pray that you might know the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe, according to the working of His great might which He worked in Christ. Have you received the full expression of God's power available to you through Christ? I dare say you have not. I am confident that God has more for you than you could ever imagine. God is ready to do more for you, in you, and through you than you would expect. God has power to completely transform your situation and your internal predisposition. There is nothing God can't save you from. There is nothing God can't overcome. There is no situation God can't transform into a blessing. God is in the business of taking curses and turning them into blessings. In Deuteronomy 23, 5, it says, The Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord loved you. The question we should probably ask is, why do we live below par? What is happening inside us that blocks us stepping into the greater blessing and dimension God has for us? One answer may be that we are simply distracted and give God less space in our lives than we should. We are advised to seek God's kingdom as our first priority, but we mostly seek things related to ourselves. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Just listen to the prayers you pray, and take note how often you pray for things that concern you, or for your friends and the problems you want to see overcome. That's not wrong, since Jesus taught us to pray for forgiveness and the meeting of our daily needs. What may be telling, however, is whether you ever have a wider perspective. Jesus also taught us to pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done. See that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Many Christians are consumed by their natural life, relationships, work, worries, family, issues with their car or house, or health and the cares of this life. That reflects what Jesus taught about the seed that fell among thorns, which was choked from fruitfulness due to the pressure of things around. In Luke 8:14, Jesus said, The seed that fell among thorns are those that hear the gospel, but are choked by the cares, riches, and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature. If you are too distracted to experience more of God, then you need to do some urgent and serious gardening in your life and get rid of worries, busyness, personal agendas, ambitions, fears, image issues, and other things that cause you to focus on this life instead of on the things of God. Another reason some people don't press in for more from God is that they have a small image of themselves. They don't believe God could have more for them. 
or they don't dare believe they deserve any more than they have. While it's fine to be content, it's not God's plan that you be robbed of His blessings. King Saul had a problem of thinking too little of himself. After Samuel anointed him king, Saul still hid from the calling. Note Samuel describing Saul's picture of himself. In 1 Samuel 15:17, he says, Though you saw yourself as little in your own eyes, are you not now the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. Some people see themselves as small and unworthy. They shrink from asking for more or getting more from God because they see themselves as unworthy or not able to cope with what newness might bring. I suspect that the one most important reason people don't get more of what God has for them is that they simply don't ask for it. Whatever their personal reason, they have not claimed what is theirs or asked God for more of what God has already prepared and purposed for them. In James 4.2 it says, You do not have because you do not ask. And in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. God loves you and has provided far more for you than you will ever realize. He wants to give you more of His grace and blessing, and He's waiting for you to rise in faith and to ask Him for it. It's your call. You measure out what you'll receive from God. I challenge you to stop living below par. God bless you.